Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial of our foundation level sample paper discussions. We completed two sets that is set A and B. Now it's time for us to quickly step into steps set C of our foundation level sample paper and look into some of the different types of questions as a part of this as well. In order to get started, the very first chapter we are picking up is again the fundamentals of testing and talking about the very first question of this chapter that is what is quality now that's a very interesting question to talk about because uh, you will be learning a critical definition of what exactly quality means to anyone now looking forward directly to the options and seeing which one would be the most appropriate answer a activities focused on providing confidence that the quality requirements will be fulfilled uh, now this is more a uh, tricky one okay at any point when you look at such options you need to be sure about that this is uh, the activities it's not talking about the outcome of something which you perform as a part of your activities right so it's all talking about that these are quality is set of activities focused on providing confidence that quality requirements will be fulfilled now that's quality assurance right that's typically quality assurance which we look forward to uh b the degree to which a component or system satisfy the stated and implied needs of its various stakeholder if i go to shop and ask you something and i get what i am looking for with you to the point i would call it as a quality service the same way here the degree to which a component or system satisfies the stated need of the stakeholder or the customer would be somewhat you know we'll be talking about quality and looks quite relevant let's confirm with c and d c says the degree to which a component or system protects information and data so that persons or other components or other systems have the degree of access appropriate to their types and levels of authorization at this point i would like to say that uh, they just tried complicating you by using a longer statement. The point is they're saying protecting the information and levels of authorization. These words clearly state that we're talking about security because that's security which protects your information and at the same time requires authorizations to access certain information, right? That's nothing to do with the quality. It is more of the security term. D, the total cost incurred on quality activities and issues and often split into prevention cost, appraisal cost, internal failure cost, and external failure cost. Now, that is something which has to do with the cost of quality, in fact, not covered in our foundation syllabus at all. These cost of quality are covered as a part of our advanced level syllabus, so you can ignore this option pretty well. So, putting up all together, the right answer here is what is quality it is b the degree to which a component or system satisfies the stated and implied needs of its various stakeholder let's look at the next question which says which of the following is a typical test objective select one of the options now test objective you remember there were a few major objectives by now we have covered two different set of papers you should be pretty much straightforward and we'll be able to tackle what is the right answer. So here we have straightforward four options, preventing defects, repairing defects, comparing actual results with that of the expected, analyzing the causes of failure. Starting from the bottom, analyzing the causes of failure is root cause analysis, comparing, uh, which is not done by testing, it's debugging, comparing actual results to expected result is test execution and uh, certainly not a typical test objective any test which is written has to be executed but that's not something what we are expecting as an outcome repairing defects developer job not testing at all so this is not one of our objective which means fixing the defects and finally we are left with one option which is preventing defects yes by participating in the reviews conducting static testing on several work products we prevent the defects and that's one of the major objectives with other objectives like finding defects, gaining confidence, providing information is a part of our core objective. So the right answer here is A, preventing defects is one of the typical test objectives and should be considered. 
All right, moving into the next question, which is question number three. A phone ringing momentarily distracts a programmer, causing the programmer to improperly program the logic that checks the upper boundary of an input variable. Later, during system testing, a tester notices that this input field accepts invalid input values as well. The improperly coded logic for the upper boundary check is now, here is a very typical, uh, you know, twisted question, which you should be taking into account in terms of understanding that how exactly a scenario can be created. Now, of course, you do understand that there was a distraction somehow for the programmer and the programmer did, did something wrong, uh, that the he improperly programmed the logic that checks the upper boundary of an input variable. Now, during the testing, you found that input field is accepting invalid input values. Now, improperly coded logic for the upper boundary check is called as, now, is it A, the root cause, B, the failure, C, the error, or D, the defect? Now, here, very straightforward thing to understand that few things are sometimes very straightforward, right? And uh, it says that the problem is in the code and it is a defect, right? Because straightforward. Sometimes you may wonder that why we are talking about input on the <clears throat> uh, invalid side or later the tester is doing all those things and he found that uh, the boundary value were working. So people start thinking about boundary value analysis, equivalence partition, but it has nothing to do with it. You found this, but as you found it, it is a defect. If the developer was trying to analyze this defect, that's where we call it as an error. If you experience performing some execution, like a real-time scenario, just like a user, you call it as a failure, but this is not even that. So the right answer here is D, the defect. You got the defect, which will be reporting to the tester because you performed certain actions and did not happen as expected. Coming to the next one, which is the question number four, a product owner says that your role as a tester on the Agile team is to catch all the bugs before the end of each iteration. Which of the following is a testing principle that could be used to respond to this false statement? Okay, so they're clearly telling you this is a false statement, but moreover, let me start from the beginning when people say that to, in order to pass the foundation level, should we also learn Agile? No, not necessarily, but importantly is to understand that uh, when it comes to the foundation level certification, we expect you to know a bit of fundamentals of Agile, not precisely that you should know every in and out about Agile, but you know a little basic about Agile, that should be enough, and you should be able to pick up the right answers here. So let's give a look once again to this particular example. The product owner says that your role as a tester on the Agile team is to catch all the bugs before the end of each iteration, right? There is a keyword here if you observed already. Which of the following is a testing principle that could be used to respond to this false statement? Now, if you are done with the Agile discussion, you will now say that where is false about this statement? Why this statement is called as a false statement? Because we are talking about the principles of testing if you look in the options, right? Now, if you observe, there is one word here which tells you about one of the principles which says Agile team, uh, as a tester in Agile team, your job is to catch all the bugs, right? All the bugs. That's something which is not possible because we have a principle saying that testing shows presence of defects but does not prove absence of defect. No matter how much testing you would have performed at any point, you cannot say that you found all the bugs because if you go on testing, you would find more bugs. For more details, watch the principle in the tutorial. You'll get the detailed justification that why this principle says not all the defects, which is actually a false statement. So no need to get, step into the options here. Defect clustering is about uh, grouping of the defects, absence of error fallacy about not meeting the requirements, Root cause analysis is not at all a principle. So the right answer here is B, testing shows the presence of defects is the principle which we are following in order to make this statement a false statement, which is not valid. Well, 
That's all from this particular tutorial team. We got four questions covered in just a short span of time because now we understand that people are used to understanding the trickiness and the complications of the question and coming to the point straightforward. So that's all from this particular tutorial. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.